Hi and welcome back to a new video. I was contacted a few weeks ago over Instagram with the message that there are apparently some very cheap 1200k CPUs out there on eBay and AliExpress. And indeed, if you check for some 1200k's, you can find CPUs that cost about 250 euro. You have to keep in mind that, that if you import them to Germany, you have to pay VAT in addition, which is about 19%. But even then, it's below 300 euro, which is very, very cheap for a new 1200K. But you can also see that in the listing it says ES, which stands for engineering sample, which means that potentially this could be an evaluation CPU, could be a CPU that's retail status or far from retail status. But I purchased one of these samples and we will check out in today's video what happens if you're going to use one of these CPUs. Seems like we just gained another viewer, which is fine, I think. So going over to the listing of the Intel QXLB 1.2 GHz sample on eBay. It's quite interesting that if you check for the QXLB on AliExpress and eBay, I could find different information about the same SKU. It could also be that the same SKU has different kind of limitations. If they are early engineering samples, they might have a reduced clock, which seems to be the case. This seems to have a clock of 1.2 gigahertz. At the same time, it could lack essential features like maybe PCI Express 4.0 or something like that. What I find quite interesting is that the eBay listing is saying has UHD 770 with nuclear display. So, where is my nuclear power plant in the CPU? I'm not sure what they're trying to tell me. Maybe that it's lacking iGPU. I'm not quite sure. Then it also says no PCI Express 5.0 support for GPU. Okay, so not sure what kind of 5.0 GPU they already have for testing. I think I don't have one, so that should not matter at all. But then they're also saying that you have to plug the GPU into the second PCI Express slot, which is also kind of interesting also technically a bit confusing because I mean most of the time this is directly connected to the CPU but it's the same thing as plugging into the first slot so not quite sure what this is about and that's also not present on the AliExpress listing so that is actually quite weird. Then you also have to keep in mind if you buy a CPU like this online at least in Germany you also have to pay VAT for importing it into the country but this will depend on your individual country where you're importing the CPU to. Could also be that you have to pay some custom fees for example that's at least not the case in germany but i had to pay about 45 euro for vat for importing the cpu so a total of around 300 euro if it performs like a 1200k probably still worth it so now the task is to find out what kind of limitations does this cpu have and are there limitations that are even relevant because for example the first m.2 slot on this board on a c690 Aorus master in theory could be gen 5 PCIe, but that certainly doesn't matter because there are no SSDs out there that are available with this transfer speed and even if for gaming that's certainly not relevant. Same thing goes for PCIe 5.0 for the first GPU slot. I mean there are no GPUs out there so why would you even care? We are going to plug a 4.0 SSD in the first M.2 slot and a 3.0 SSD in the second M.2 slot and at the same time we will also use 6400 mega transfer memory modules and see if there are memory speed or frequency limitations using this CPU because if they're already stating that the CPU core clock is already only 1.2 gigahertz then might be possible that high memory frequencies will not be as easy or not possible. CPU, SSDs and also memory is already installed. Now I only have to install the AIO. And for the AIO we will use this 360 AIO from Aros Gigabyte which I also received as a sample for testing. So thank you Gigabyte for that. Apart from the whole technical situation, everything we're testing in today's video, there's also the legal situation which you have to consider. And this will depend on the country you're living in. At least judging from the German perspective, if you buy something from a company but this company legally does not own this product. You actually also don't own it. But that's something that's very specific for Germany, I guess. And for the Intel CPUs, the engineering samples, there are also a lot of misinformation out there. Because a lot of people are thinking whenever there is engineering sample or Intel Confidential written on a CPU, that you can never own it. Some people believe that this CPU will like forever be belong to Intel. But that's not always correct. At least judging from my history, like the 10 years doing like overclocking competitions, 
For example, we had situations where we got trays of CPUs from Intel for overclocking competitions for the participants. And then in the end, we gave them away to the participants, like in raffles, for example. And this was officially done by Intel. So these CPUs left the Intel stock and officially were given to participants and then they belong to them, right? So in this situation, they are allowed to sell these CPUs. And with these situations, sometimes Intel confidential CPUs end up in the retail market completely legally. And the same thing happened for us with the YouTube channel, for example. We also received uh, engineering samples for testing purposes and we were allowed to keep them. And we even had giveaways where we were giving away engineering samples. So it's not that easy to always say, if it's Intel confidential and an engineering sample, that it's like a, a thing that forever belongs to Intel. That's not exactly true. On the other hand though, there are also like SIs out there, for example, or like companies who are investigating CPUs and developing stuff prior to launch. They also receive a ton of CPUs. And sometimes let's say half year after launch, they still have the stacks of engineering samples laying around and then Sometimes these companies are selling the CPUs even though they would not be allowed to sell them. But in the end, as a customer buying them from eBay or AliExpress, you simply will not find out if you're legally buying a CPU or not. Like if you're doing something illegal. You, there's like just no way to find out. And I even contacted the AliExpress seller and even the eBay seller, but I didn't get a reply from both. So yeah, quite difficult. Okay, so let's check what happens with this CPU. Well, at least it's happily cycling through the debugging codes, which is a good indicator that the CPU is at least alive. The debug code is now stuck at A0, which is normally a good sign, but as you can see, we have no display signal. I'm not quite sure if it just skipped the VGA detection, which could mean different things. So we might want to try a different GPU. We want to try this one, BIOS reset, different multiple things we can try. Very interesting. So after plugging the VGA into the second slot, it immediately started like without any issues. But at least we will now have the opportunity to take a first look at our CPU. It's telling us genuine Intel sample. So it's a very early ES. But you can also see if you right click into CPU C, at least in idle, the frequency is far from only 1.2 gigahertz. Obviously they could just be talking about the base frequency, but P cores are 4 gigahertz, E cores are 3 gigahertz. Also memory 4800 mega transfers. So that's the correct base speed for DDR5. But what about CPU frequency? I mean, five gigahertz should be possible, right? Now I quickly want to test the SSDs in the system. As I said before, we have a Fire CUDA SSD in there, PCIe 3.0 X4 and an MP600, which is PCIe 4.0 and also X4. And now we will simply do a quick benchmark with Crystal Disk Mic to see if we hit the bandwidth that is expected. For the MP600, it's about 5000 megabyte per second in read and about 4200 megabyte in write. And as you can see with the results, this is exactly what we expected. Since the system is still running stock, I'm just going to attempt a quick test with R20 to see what kind of like frequencies and voltages we can expect, also temperatures. Looking in CPU-C, we can see 3.4 gigahertz on the P core, which is certainly quite a bit lower than a retail CPU, but you can also see CPU package temperature only 43 degrees Celsius, which is obviously a result of the V core, which is only at 0.9 volt. That is way below a retail 12,100K. And that's also why we only see a package power draw of about 75 watt. So definitely room for manual tuning. I started debugging some stuff in BIOS. So if you go to IO port, for example, you can select the initial display output, can select which kind of slot should be used, but no difference at all. Same goes for disabling internal GPU makes no difference as well. And also if you go to miscellaneous, you can select the CPU PCIe speed. I tried Gen 1234, but also no difference there. But this doesn't necessarily mean that the first slot is not working at all or like broken. It could also be just a boot or post issue that you cannot initialize the VGA in the first slot for post. So to verify this, we will simply plug a random PCIe SSD in the first slot and see if this is getting detected in Windows or not. Quite interesting. So this SSD is not getting picked up, 
and I tried again with a different drive and also this SSD is not detected in Windows. Okay, so let's check what happens if we plug in a second VGA. At least we get a display signal from the 3080 Ti. So let's check if Windows is detecting the 1050 Ti. Quite interesting, so neither in Device Manager, as you can see, nor in GPU-C, the second VGA is getting picked up. That's quite interesting, but also not that great, to be honest, because the second slot on this board only features X4, which means I'm expecting a significant performance loss in 3D, which we're going to check out after we figured out what kind of performance the CPU can reach. So we will try to enter the BIOS and maybe upclock the CPU to probably 5 GHz if that works out and also check what kind of memory frequency we can reach. Seems like the CPU also does not like high memory speeds. So at least 6400, 6200, 600, 5800 and 5600 mega transfers were all not working so far. I spent about one more hour investigating and figuring out what kind of memory frequency we can run and really the highest I can boot is 5000 mega transfers. Like if I even switch to 5066, there is no chance in booting. So I ended up adjusting and tightening the timings and 32 for cast latency is the lowest I can boot. 3434 on a TRCD and TRP and this results in about 78 gigabyte per second in read and 72 gigabyte per second in write. So that's not absolutely terrible, it's still better than anything we saw for launch for DDR5 like those uh, let's say 5200 uh, C40 or like 4800 C40, it's still better than that but it's still not great. Well at least in idle no problem but you could see under load, only stable until a certain point. Well, at least it's working with 4.9 GHz, but also here the E cores are not able to clock that high. Same goes for the cache. And all of that together in combination with the rather slow memory, it results in 8300 points. And a well optimized 1200K on stock easily always has 10,000 points. So we're lacking like 16, 70% performance, at least in multi core. But what about 3D performance? Because in the end, if you buy the CPU for gaming, that's the only thing you're probably going to care about. First test is 3D mark times by Extreme GT1. If we look at the 3080 Ti with normal bandwidth, so PCIe 4.0 x16, we get a result of 63 FPS. And now with times four, so it's only a fourth of the bandwidth, it's only losing 3% in performance. So only down by two FPS. That's actually amazing. And sometimes people tend to forget that PCIe 4.0, even though it's just four lanes, that is still the full performance of PCIe 2.0 or like 3.0 with X8. Now we're looking at Far Cry 6, 1080p and high details. And I have to admit that the 1200K ES clocked at 4.9 gigahertz, the way you saw it in the video, is performing quite well. Especially if you look at the minimum FPS, it's almost on the same level as a normal retail 12900K. But if you look at the average FPS, we're down by about 16%. But switching to 4K resolution and ultra settings, you straight notice the penalty in the bandwidth. Because for example, if you look at the 5600X or 5800X 3D, they basically almost all perform the same as long as it's only GPU bound. But now with the bandwidth limitation on our engineering sample, we can see that we're losing about 17 to 18% in FPS. In the end, to me personally, it's still quite difficult to draw a fair conclusion, especially keeping the legal aspects in mind. This will depend on the country you live in, obviously, but you never know where the CPU comes from and what the legal aspects are of purchasing the CPU. That's something you definitely have to keep in mind. But just judging from a technical perspective, the price performance ratio of this CPU is still very good. Even though you have several penalties like the bandwidth with the VGA, you can only run it on X4 with this board, you can only utilize the second slot. But then this will also highly depend on the VGA you're using. A quick VGA like let's say a 3090 or a 6950 XT, they are more bandwidth limited because they are performing quite well. On the other hand, if you use a slower VGA, then the bandwidth penalty might not even be that big. But then you also have to keep in mind that if you use, for example, a PCIe 3.0 VGA, you might be even more limited because you still only have four lanes, at least on this board. So that's something you definitely have to consider. Just looking at the performance on the clocks, let's say the P cores and the E cores, 
they are performing very well, like almost like a retail. Not quite as good, but it's pretty close. But then again, the IMC is pretty terrible. I think every 12600K or any other CPU I've seen so far, they can all easily run like 6000, but this one with 5000, all out, not that great. So there are definitely some drawbacks having a CPU like that, but then it's still 50% of a 12900K, so it's not too bad. But it's not something I would definitely recommend to buy. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.